everyone, it's Hannah and welcome to episode one of the Corner of Craft podcast. Now if you're very confused as to why this is episode one when I have a hundred other episodes, then you would have good reason to be confused, I suppose. I just feel like I haven't podcast in ten months. Ten months? I think so. It's been a really long time, probably since, probably since Vlogmas 2023. Uh, it's probably the last time I podcast. So I thought instead of trying to remember everything that I needed to show you that I have finished and done since then, uh, just to start afresh. Start afresh, start anew, um, get this whole thing going again and reintroduce myself. Uh, I will apologise for how I sound. I am poorly. I do have tissues. But Mario is taking the baby out for the morning. Uh, so I can get some dyeing done, which you've probably already seen the video of. And I just thought, whilst I have baby free time, record a podcast. Because I've been very into watching knitting podcasts lately. So I uh, want to get back in the knitting podcast game. It's going to be a very similar format to uh, old school Corn of Craft podcast. It's far too warm for this jumper, but I'm wearing a really ratty t-shirt underneath it. Um, so we're rolling with it. And uh, yeah. Hello, if you're new here, welcome to the Corner of Craft. I hope that you are well. Please introduce yourself in the comment section down below. Let me know what you're working on, sipping on, and all of that fun stuff. My name is Hannah. I'm coming at you today from, actually, I thought it was meant to be raining all day. Not raining, quite sunny, Nottingham here in the UK, England specifically, land of Robin Hood. And that is knitting that we received as a gift that the baby was a little bit sick on this morning. So I'm just going to pop that over there and then I'll put it in the wash. <laughs> and um, yeah, I am a yarn dyer and I also make stitch markers. My business is going to be 11 years old very soon. In fact, by the time this goes out, it probably already is 11 years old, which is absolutely bananas. Uh, that's a long time have a business and I can't actually believe that I have 11 year old business. Bananas. I make hand beaded stitch markers, I dye yarn, we have a lovely time over here where I make studio vlogs, chatty videos and all of that fun stuff. We talk about crafting, knitting, I dye yarn sometimes, I bead weave sometimes and all in all we enjoy a cup of tea. Yes. Today I'm going to be chatting to you about the works in progress that I have, hoping that it then encourages me to pick them back up. Uh, I have one almost finished object that I finished yesterday that I need to block and sew buttons on. Therefore, not quite finished. And yeah, I'm hoping that this sort of reignites, re-sparks my uh, knitting, crochet excitement. But it is far too warm for this jumper. So shall we chat about this jumper? It's staying on. It might not stay on. <laughs> We will assess as we go along. This is the Nightshade Society sweater. I cast this on on my birthday in 2023, which is September. I really wanted to wear it to East Anglia Yarn Festival 2024. That was before many of you knew I was pregnant, even though I was about 20, 20 weeks pregnant. We'd had our 20 week scan and I didn't, I was gonna announce it just before East Anglia Yarn Festival, but then we had to, I was gonna announce it just before East Anglia Yarn Festival. So when people saw me, they weren't like, she just, just got, is she pregnant or is she just got a bit chunkier? Or is she just wearing clothing that makes her look a bit different? Um, but then there was something with the scan and we had to go back and have another one. So I didn't want to announce it just in case anything was wrong. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I wanted to finish this because uh, I wanted to wear it. I didn't finish it. I was working on the bottom rib. I was so almost done. Had I done both sleeves? I had done both sleeves because I did both sleeves. And I was working on the bottom rib. Because um, I did both sleeves so I knew how much yarn I had left. Anyway, this is the Nightshade Society sweater by Tristan, also known as Dragonhorde Designs. The Dye of Dragonhorde yarn. Um, it's got this fun cable all down the side with bubbles. I actually don't mind bubbles. I got into quite the groove of knitting them. I'm sure I talk about it in my podcast. I was going to say ad nauseum, but then if I haven't recorded one since December last year, then it won't really be ad nauseum because you wouldn't have seen me work on it for quite a lot. But I've probably got videos where I chat about it. Um, this yarn is actually, some of it's my own hand dyed yarn, some of it is the wonderful Helen of Giddy yarn. My hair is falling out so much, I'm 
three months postpartum now so the hair is almost non-existent it was so thick and luscious now it's just gone uh the yarn is the beautiful helen of giddy yarn in her eeyore colorway did i buy that during the pandemic i'm pretty sure i did and then i dyed up some uh suri my suri cloud lace base to hold with it in like a gray with black i can't remember what i've called it definitely have sold it can't remember what I called it. Uh, I'm sure it's got a name. I'm sure it's online. I'll find it. The brain. It's not quite doing what it used to. And uh, yeah, very soft, very snuggly. Haven't really worn it yet because I finished it in March last year and then it started heating up and then I got very pregnant and it uh, doesn't matter because if it's heating up, I'm not going to be wanting to wear a, a Surrey sweater anyway. It's only just starting to get cooler now. Uh, and yeah, I made it quite a good length. I kind of don't want to stand out because I'm wearing tracky bottoms. I'm trying to look presentable up here, but down here is very much not. Uh, but I made it qu a quite good length, and yeah. It's not as cropped as I thought it was going to be, but at the same time, I'm glad it's not, because I think I'll wear it more when it's not as cropped. That's the issue I have with some of the jumpers that I've made in the past. I've made them cropped to wear over dresses, but then I actually find I don't wear dresses that much, especially at the moment, because I'm breastfeeding. Dresses are really awkward. Um, so I end up wearing them with jeans and then I don't wear the cropped jumpers as much because I don't really want my stomach on show if I'm wearing a jumper it's because it's cold um, but yeah the tea I'm drinking today in my beautiful new mug that Maria got me for my birthday by Pitcairn beautiful mug very nice uh, this is Bird and Blend by Pumpkin Pie tis the season cheers if you fancy a cup yourself link in the description box I am an affiliate no shame. Mate, I'm on maternity leave. You get paid bog all. Mmm, delicious. Delicious. That's my first one of the season. I've been saving it. I've been saving it for the podcast so I could have an actual... Yes. And I'm on oat milk because a uh, tiny one doesn't really do well with dairy. So, it's a sad time. No cheese. I know there's vegan cheese. It's just not as good. Excuse me. I'm just going to blow my nose. Right, shall we get started? Because... I'm, yes, I haven't made any notes, so I'm going to have to be looking stuff up as I go, which is not the most time efficient thing. So this is the baby cardigan that I've knit for one of my friends who gave birth a couple of weeks ago. Um, he is dinky, as in the baby is, my friend is not. That'd be weird. Uh, so I've got, it's the Owasta, Ow, Ow, yep, Cardi, baby Cardi by Knit Pearl Girl who's just started her podcast back up again and I watched it for the first time. I'd never watched her podcast before and very much enjoyed it. Um, something I've discovered I really like doing, especially on Baby Knits, is a little tubular cast off. Especially if I'm gifting it to someone who has no idea what a tubular cast off is. I don't know why that's so satisfying. I showed Mario, he's my husband. I showed Mario and was like, look at this! And he was like, oh, it's so good. What am I looking at? I was like, exactly. So yes, yeah, so we've got a nice tubular cast off here and then around here... It's a not tubular cast off, which I originally thought, that's sad, why is it not? But actually it looks quite good. And it's just a nice little Andalusian rib cardigan. I got buttons. Don't judge me, I got them off Amazon. Do judge me, I should have gone to my local craft shop. That was on me. Um, I wasn't thinking straight. I was, <laughs> it was 1am breastfeeding session, all right. Uh, but yeah, I got these beautiful plastic buttons um, that, I will use three of them on this, but I need to wash this and I need to block this. Uh, so that is why, yes, I finished it yesterday. I'm not quite sure if I put the buttonholes in the right place because it says to put the, I don't think I have. I think I should have only had two buttonholes and I've done three. Cause it says to put the buttonholes two centimeters down from where it joins, but I put the, um, neck band button band on too short of a cable so I can actually line it up because all my other cables are in use and uh, if you know anything about me you know that I'm a cheapskate and I don't want to buy new things so we've gone three buttons but I'm sure it'll be fine it's for a baby so he's gonna look dapper in it yes this yarn because that's actually something you care about um it's not just me showing people that I talk about this yarn is actually incredibly cheap yarn it's Hobby Essentials DK yarn from Poundland. 
Uh, for those of you who are international, it might be snickering at that name. Um, but that is what our one pound shops are called. So Poundland. We've also got Pound World. Um, it it doesn't sell anything rude, but it does sell yarn that says it's DK weight. Uh, it's 150 meters per 50 grams, so it's quite a thin DK. And I was having a look, they also had Aram weight yarn, which was definitely thicker than this. And I was having a look at the meterage, and it also said that that was 150 meters per 50 grams. I was like, that's not true. It can't be. It can't be the same. But yeah, it was one pound or one euro 30. What's PLN? Don't know what PLN is. PL, oh, Polish. And then check. <laughs> um, yes. So it's just in a cream colour, don't think it's got a name, it's 100% acrylic. Um, yeah, it's a baby knit, it's going to be washed, it's going to get sicked on like that cardigan was. So I didn't want to use anything too precious, especially because he is baby number three and uh, they've got two other children to be worrying about whether they felt anything. So we've just gone acrylic. Anyway, that's my almost finished object. I have something in my eye, probably this jumper. Not the whole jumper, that would be ludicrous. Right, whilst we're talking commercial yarn, let's stick to commercial yarn. In my, the little grey girl uh, project bag that I've got a little bee on from Holly Heartfelt. Um, it says wizards on. It's cute. It's a cute little bag. I love this bag. I use it a lot. It's just squishy. It's good. Um, I'm making Mario a pair of socks. Now I cast these socks on in January. I did a demonstrating how long a film is by how much knitting I got done during said film short. Uh, we went to see Wonka literally just after Christmas because I took the wrong needle size for Mario socks down to my parents. Very annoying. I always knit his socks on 2.5 millimeter needles and guess what I took down? 2.25. So they're going to be a bit snugger on him than he's used to because I just cast the same amount of stitches and was like, well that'll be fine and he was like, that'll be fine. And then over the year he's like, I quite like having loose socks. I'm like, well tough, these are going to be tighter socks on you. So bananas. If you hate them, fine. I'm not taking them out. So we've got a half object. This is West Yorkshire Spinners Signature 4 Ply. Of course it is. I bought a bunch of commercial sock yarn for Mario because, as demonstrated by this sock here, that's made out of Monster Manual on Yak sock, he wears through them like a bilio. He wears his socks so often. His hand knit socks, he has them on all the time. Does he wear slippers at home? No. So, even though I tell him all the time, please wear slippers. Uh, so, yeah, they always get holes in. So, I've just bought a bunch of commercial sock yarn and be like, cool. You're not having anything fancy anymore. Even BFL he's wearing through, which is actually ridiculous. But then this is also BFL, so. 75% um, wool, 25% nylon, perfect for socks. It contains 35% blue face less, I apologise, it's not. Reared, sheared and spun in Britain, delightful. This is the colourway pheasant, that's actually the information that I was looking for on the label, Hannah, come on, get a grip. Uh, it's just a self-striping self sock yarn, delightful, it stripes itself, I'm not doing any of these patterns, all these little jiggly bits, I'm just knitting round and round and round. So I'm using 2.25mm needles, 72 stitches, and I think I worked out, I maybe did, I maybe did about 15 rounds of 2x2 two two rib, that's usually what I do because I get really fed up with doing 2x2 two two rib, I don't understand how people can do 25 rounds of 2x2 two two rib. Um, because I think I would, I just want to get on with knitting the socks round and round and round, to be quite honest. My little beginning of round stitch marker, which keeps turning around the wrong way, is actually by uh, Chapel View Crafts. I've been an admirer of her stuff for a very long time and then decided to actually treat myself to something. And of course, I got the Beans on Toast stitch marker, because I eat baked beans quite a lot. Um... I'm very English. Shoot me. Don't actually. Uh, but yeah, I'm currently on the rib of the second sock, which I cast on as soon as I finish the first sock. Standard wedge toe decrease, grafting the toe, as we do. And I made sure after I did the heel, uh, heel flap and gusset, because they fit him the best, even though 
I don't really enjoy knitting them that much, um, but then I wound off the excess when I picked up the stitches so the stripe pattern would continue and it wouldn't be glaringly obvious that the heel is where it is. Um, yeah, so that is that sock. Living in this beautiful unicorn project bag that I actually won from Becky Spraninitz uh, when she had her, she had a little Patreon competition and it felt a bit like a fix because we are busy mates but um, at the same time it wasn't a fix, I did genuinely pay for her uh, thing and it was just funny how it worked out. But this is Fawn of the Fox project bag, I don't know if she's still making project bags but it's very cute and it's a massive size. I cast this shawl on for Helen of Giddy Arms and uh, Franny Do Makes spring shawl along. Then I gave birth. So. Uh, obviously I have not done as much progress on this as I wanted to. This is the Fernvir shawl. Um, it's Fernvir? I think so. By Sosu Knits, Susanna Zoma. Fernvir. And I've got a beautiful chicken progress keeper here by uh, Under the Under the Willow Pottery. I just know you as Sophie. Under under the Willow Pottery. I was right first time. I don't just know you as Sophie. Yes, little chicken. Look how cute it is. Very cute. Uh, so this shawl is entirely brioche. I had to restart it several times. Um, so now I have lifelines between every single section because I had to... I restarted it, I think, five times before it stuck. And it's not even that it's challenging. Mm. I've done a lot of brioche. I really enjoy brioche, I find it quite uh, mindless, very enjoyable to do, but um, I just kept going wrong, I'll be completely honest, uh, and we were watching Come From Away on Apple TV, and we're actually going to see it in the theatre in November, very exciting, grandparents are watching the tiny one, I'm, not that I don't, they do a great job, it's just the first time leaving her with someone else, and uh, yeah, so this is beautiful shawl, so all of this yarn is actually yarn that I bought from East Anglia Yarn Festival, and this year, this year 2023. So we've got a pale pink, which you can see more on the back than you can on the front, from Curated Yarn Co. And this is in her Ada Lovelace colorway, which I thought was quite a prominent colorway because Ada Lovelace and her dad, uh, Lord Byron, buried quite close to where I live. So that is very exciting. So I was like, I kind of have to. And it's this beautiful pale pink and then it's got some like, uh, yellowy and ready, very light speckling, not much at all, but really pretty. And then I've got two from Pixie Yarn. Um, we've got Peas Blossom, which is sort of this section here. Whoop. That's Peas Blossom. And then the other one is Equinox, which is the dark colour, which is the prominent colour that you can see. And this is on her sparkle fingering base. I'll actually tell you all the bases because I'm very out of practice. Can you tell? So this is 75% Merino, 20% Nylon, 5% Stellina. The Peas Blossom is her sock fingering weight, which is Sue Porsche Merino, 75% Nylon, 25%. And Ada Lovelace is 100% Merino 4-ply. Uh, Sue Porsche. So all different bases, but you know what? That's absolutely fine. Um, I'm knitting this how the pattern asks me to. The rows are already getting long and I'm not even that far into it. So I just do a little bit every so often. It requires a little bit more concept. Also, I kind of put everything on pause to knit a tiny baby cardigan. Um, but yeah, I just, I stopped knitting for a good chunk of time after the tiny one was born. And so when I started knitting again, I'd literally just knit like one row because you knit one row twice. Uh, and when the tiny one first came home, she was going to bed at the same time as us, essentially. But now she's going to bed a touch earlier. Um, also helped by the fact that Mario also goes to bed a touch earlier because he's a baker. So I just sit and knit of an evening again, which is actually quite refreshing. But I might try and bring back a bit of bead weaving as well because I do miss it. Every year I host a um, Advents of December's Past make along haven't done one this year because I've not been recording content I had a baby I'll stop mentioning it at some point it still feels odd three months in I forgot to apologize for the tumble dryer that's fine you'll be fine so in this project bucket in this massive project bag anyway that mum got me I'm pretty sure it's from Hobbycraft uh, I have my 2020 three advent from Lofty Loops Allison 
also started podcasting again. Very much enjoyed watching that. And has been making videos on Patreon again, which is very nice. So these are all twisted up because I took them down to mum and dad's and was very optimistic that I'd get loads done while they held a baby. I did not. That did not happen. So this is the... I'm crocheting. I guess I should have done all the knitting things first, but I wasn't thinking. Ask you, I just need to blow my nose. I'm fully just not going to have any makeup left on my face. So I'm crocheting, which is lovely. Uh, I cast this on uh, during the opening ceremony of the Olympics and I actually got loads done because I worked out how to crochet while breastfeeding, which was great, but I've not been able to emulate it since and she's got a bit longer now, it's a bit trickier. So this is the Little Squares Blanket by Julie Harrison and uh, a lot of this is trying to work out how long I want this blanket to be. I think this is probably the last square on this column. I'm actually going to do. So it's really cute, it's like linen stitch, is it called linen stitch? And it's um, DK weight, so I'm using four ply held double, um, sock yarn held double, and this is Lofty Loops Advent. So for the first good chunk, I'm just going to do all the colours in order, and then I might mix it up a little bit. So this is one, and you basically, you do a strip. Oh no, I'm pulling out my croton, oh, that's fine. Let me actually, the reason this stitch mark is here is so I put this through this stitch so that doesn't happen. Uh, so you do your strip and then you pick up along the side and do another, do like a one that, I'll put a picture on the screen. But it's really cute and I got really inspired and I did loads and it grows really quickly because it's double knit and then I haven't touched it in a really long time. But I really want to get back to it. I'm using a 4.5mm crochet hook. I just bought this hook on Etsy. Uh, I can't think what the seller's called. Show notes. I didn't... Show notes are in the description box. Or a link to the show notes is in the description box. In the top pinned comment. Um, yes. I will link everything down there. Uh, along with social media and all of that fun stuff if you want to find me elsewhere. I post sometimes. I've been slacking. Uh, lately, I won't lie, but I'm technically on maternity leave, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, this yarn is absolutely stunning. So yeah, the first, the first 24 colours are all going to be in order, and then after that, I might just mix and match it and have a good time. So yes, this is going to be a nice long ongoing project, and I'm going to have a good time. I just need to pick it up. So the contrasting that I'm using is. Just an undyed un skein of my merino sock base, which is 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon. Maths, 85-15. Super buttery soft. And then I'm pretty sure this is 75-25 superwash merino nylon. Could be wrong. Pretty sure it is. Can't remember. But I'm having a lovely time working it up. And um, yes, I'm hoping to. Now I've got a bit of an evening back, not really, but now I've got about an hour before I go to bed. I can like rotate through my projects so I work on a little bit of them every single time because I think I want this podcast to be monthly because I think that's a realistic progress. If you watch me for a while, and I guess the fact that those socks were cast on in January um, speaks to that as well. I'm a very slow crafter, I don't sneeze out projects, they take me a while to do. Uh, this jumper took me six months to make and I was kind of work on it quite consistently but I actually wasn't I did put it down for a really long time so I'm a very slow crafter uh, so if that's not your speed then that's absolutely fine thanks for being here up until this point but um yeah I don't race through projects I do talk quite a lot but I don't race through projects I do take my time with them you might end up seeing the same projects over and over again uh, I might try and like slip in some quick projects like baby knits um and the like but I can't make any promises. I'm not going to cast on new stuff just so I have new stuff to talk about because that's how you end up with too many whips and feeling overwhelmed and not knowing how to work on anything. Right, I've got one final whip to share. Oh, if you were watching for a while, this was my Advents of December's past project last year. I finished it. I need to block it. All the ends are sewn in. I need to block it. This is actually meant to be for tiny one. So I actually need to block it. But this is using my Cast View, um, Cast View Yarns Mermaid Advent. Uh, around the edge I used Gideon's Eeyore, left over from this jumper. And yeah, I need to block it and then put it up in the nursery. Um, 
although she uses sleep, sleep sacks, but yeah, I finished that. My final work in progress is in my Von & Yarns bag that she and I did a swap years ago, like a little present swap, and I got one of, one of her bags, among other stuff, I'm sure. Um... And yeah, I cast this on in May and I got loads of it done because I went for a weekend away with a bunch of dyers. We stayed at a hotel, we were being spa frogs and uh, we were having a lovely time. I got loads of it done. And then I uh, stopped working on it. Now, can I remember where I am? Hmm. I'm not sure. I really hope so once I look at the pattern. Uh, this is the Field Day cardigan. And... From what I remember, the reason I've kind of put it down is because it's actually a little bit complicated and what I should have done is just ploughed on through and have I? No. So now I need to do some um, deep looking at the pattern, trying to work out where I am. If I was smart, I would have made a note on the pattern where I was. Now I'm not smart, so I probably ha haven't done that. But we will, we will see. So this yarn is absolutely beautiful and I really want the finished object so I need to crack on. Absolutely stunning. So I'm holding sock yarn together with mohair. I swatched, I got gauge. I always swatch, I'm that nerd. So this is the black. I think this is a cardigan. Oh, there's my swatch. There's my swatch. It's a tiny swatch. Did I block it? No. Uh, <laughs> oops. But... The black is Weirdstone by Skein in the Stitch. This is on her plush sock base, which is 75% uh, Superwash Merino, 25% nylon. And then the mohair, which I believe the mohair base is being discontinued, is Creative Anarchy. This is Beware of Crimson Peak. This is on her Willow base, 72% Kid Mohair, 28% Silk. And yeah, so this... I saw this and I was like, I need that. So I bought three skeins of this. I already had three skeins of this from when um, Jess did her Sarah J Mass collection. I know nothing about that author. I know nothing of her books, but I just knew I'm never gonna get a black this good. And I wear, I usually wear band t-shirts, black band t-shirts. So I was like, cool. I'm gonna make a cardigan out of these two because it can go with anything. I might just brighten up an outfit a little bit. So this is what they look like held together. Absolutely love them. I just need to work out where I am on the pattern. Because I've done that bit. I've done the little collar bit. I've done... Uh, and then hopefully we'll be well away. But it's a bit of a complicated construction. I don't fully know what I'm doing. And I think that is one of the things that is... Something that I'm finding quite difficult. But that's fine. Right, I'm going to love you and leave you there. I was going to chat about, like, stuff I've been reading, stuff I've been watching, blah, blah, blah. But I can't get through a sentence without coughing. So, to save you, to save me, to save us all, I'm going to love you and leave you. And um, get back to the other video that I was filming. Because I don't necessarily have to talk through that one as much. I can do voiceover. Um, hopefully, this stops. Oh, I forgot to say. My sister and brother-in-law went to the Lake District and they brought me back a birthday present and it is, oh gosh, from Alpaca Lee Ever After. Absolutely everything you need to make your own alpaca cowl. So this is the cowl. It's got the pattern on the back of here, so I'll see where I show you that. And then it's just got this beautiful, it's got the needles. Beautifully squishy alpaca yarn, and it really makes me want to stock alpaca in my shop. So, I might have to start stocking alpaca when I come back in January, properly. So I'm really excited to make that cow. So maybe that be a nice quick knit that I can make at some point. But anyway, I'm going because I can't stop coughing. I need to take this jumper off. Thank you so so much for watching. Thank you for being here. Sorry that this episode's a little bit shorter. I was going to make it a longer one, but. Dealness is not happening. It's not happening. I just keep coughing. It's not fun for anyone. So, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. If you would like to see more from me, please feel free to subscribe. I post every week. And if you want to see even more, you can follow me over on Patreon. There you get a bonus video every week. I'm going to be introducing a new tier in the new year, I'm thinking. Exciting times. And, uh, yeah. 
Uh, if you'd like to follow me on your social media, please feel free. Links, as always, can be found in the description box below. Along with anything else you might need, like show notes, podcast notes. And uh, hopefully next time I speak to you, I'll be feeling a little bit better. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thank you for being here. Thanks for being amazing. And, uh, yeah, see you very soon in my next video. Bye.